Let's go there to, together tonight, all right? How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will sing how great, how great is our God. Say how great is our God, how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will sing how great, how great is our God. God. 
So we lift our hands. 
deserve the glory. Come on, tell him. You deserve the glory and the honor. Come on.
Tell him again. You're the God of the miraculous, and you're here to demonstrate to us. a little higher and say you
one more time and say, you're the God. Sing one more simple song of worship.
I sing something in the spirit right now. <clears throat> Where the Lord says, every time that you pull on my spirit, it's something akin to when you're trying to fly a kite. You're trying to get it to go higher. You pull down on that string, and every time you do, you catch another draft of wind, and it pulls higher and higher and higher and higher. He said, every chance you get, when you're in my spirit, pull on me. Pull on me. Pull on me. Pull on me. And you ascend higher and higher and higher and higher into my glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we draw from you. We pull from you right now. Hallelujah, God. We have no strength without you, Jesus. We pull on you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take us higher, Jesus. Take us higher, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we draw from you, Jesus. We pull on you, Jesus. We pull on you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We pull on you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We pull on you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. S stay right here. Just stay right here a minute. Amen? Let's raise our voices tonight. Because I, I, I tell you something. I sense there's something God's wanting to do here tonight yet. We're not there yet. You know, we, we, uh, we, haven't, we, haven't, got, we haven't got the dipstick in yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to get a good reading here. Come on, would you stand with me tonight? Stand with me tonight. And just begin to raise your voice. And if you've never sang in the Spirit, let's just begin to sing in the Holy Ghost. 
If you don't sing in the Holy Ghost, just sing praises to Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Colomandia, todo Dios, 
By my spirit, says the Lord, I'm moving, I'm moving throughout this place. On winds of my spirit, you will rise, I'll take you to a heavenly place. We'll glide together on winds of love, on wings of grace, on wings of grace. We'll fly together throughout the skies. We'll fly together in heavenly place. You are my children. You are my people. You are my vessels of love. I'll fill you with my precious spirit, and then you'll rise with me above. We'll ride together on heavenly winds and glide together in heavenly place. Just let me flow within, within, or cause you to rise in heavenly grace, in heavenly grace, in heavenly grace. In heavenly grace. Hambia no li ando li ando, hambia no li ando li ando. My spirit within, my spirit within embodied your body and gives you the wind, gives you the wind to rise on high. It gives you the wind to see and fly oh thank you jesus thank you jesus god is saying his his wind his spirit the wind you cannot see the wind blowing but it's blowing in this place but you can see that the wind we can take wind we can take rise with the wind of the spirit because we are like a kite or a balloon that's when full of the wind it begins to rise amen will you be that vessel tonight that God can fill you with His Spirit and cause you to rise up with Him. Give body to the Spirit of God. He's blowing throughout the earth. He hovered about the earth. And the wind came on the day of Pentecost and blew. But the vessel of God is one that can, can take that filling, can, can be filled up and, and like the big hot air balloon or the kite, can rise, can rise. The wings of the eagle can glide upon the wind. But yet, we can't see it unless it's manifested through a vessel. We can't see the wind unless it blows the leaves or unless it lifts the kite. So will you be God's vessel tonight? Will you be God's vessel in life? Amen. Not just tonight. God's Spirit is here, oh let it rise within you, let it rise, let it rise. There's much to be done, there's much to be done, but He left His Spirit until it is done, until it is done. I won't leave you like orphans in this place. He said, I'll send my spirit, the spirit of grace, the spirit of grace. Thank you, Lord, in this place tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody give him some praise in the house tonight, will you? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Let's give him some praise tonight. Can we do it? Come on, we, we just didn't get started yet. Give him some praise. Somebody praise the Lord in this house tonight. 
Come on, can somebody, can somebody give me a praise the Lord? Can somebody give me a hallelujah tonight? Somebody give me a shout, hallelujah. Glory, 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 hallelujah. How we've stepped into something tonight. Praise God. Come on, we're, we're just getting into this thing higher and higher every night. Every, you know, we've only been here one night. This is our second night. We're just getting deeper and deeper into something. Amen? Come on, how do you feel the presence of the Lord in this place tonight? <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but I want to I soar with him. Come on, are you with me? He said, we'll mount up with wings as eagles. Hallelujah. We're going we're gonna to get some wind under our wings and fly. I don't know about you, but this, this, old, this old body, it holds me back. Amen. Come on, I'm, I don't know about you. I'm, I'm ready. Aren't you ready? I mean, if it, le if it means leaving this old body behind and, and just flying, woo, I'm ready. I'm, I want to head out with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But I love this part. He, he, he said this. He said that, that we should not all sleep. Oh, I love that. We're not all going to sleep. That means we're not all going to die. But the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Hallelujah. And then we which are alive and remain are going to be caught up. Hallelujah. Caught up. Come on, say it with me. Caught up to be with the Lord. And so shall we ever be with him. Come on, ain't no grave going to hold this body down. Ain't no grave going to hold this body down. Make it your confession tonight. There ain't no grave going to hold this body down. Come on, let's give him a shout tonight. Hallelujah. 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 One of these days, it might be tonight. It might be before this night's over. Brother Bob, we might hear the trump of God. We might just be airborne out of this place. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Come on, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. He's coming. Jesus is coming soon. He's coming soon. Listen, when I was a kid back in 1972 and first got born went and rededicated my life to God, I got saved when I was seven. By the time I was 16, I was blowing my mind out on LSD. By 72, at 19, I was back serving God. And I can remember being in a meeting where they preached about the second coming of the Lord. I'm telling you, it felt, Brother Bob, it felt like he was going to come before the service was over. That was in 1972. I got something for you, folks. If it was close then, come on, it's really close now. We are on the edge of this thing. We are on the edge of this thing. Praise God. Praise God. He might as well kick your shoes off. Don't rip your clothes off, but you can kick your shoes off. And get as light as you can. Hallelujah. Praise God. You got something? She wants me to sing. Can you do it? Ain't no grave. Gonna hold my body down. Oh, you gotta dance Gonna hold my body down When I hear that trumpet sound Gonna get up out of the ground Cause it ain't no rain Gonna hold my body down Trump. 
cause ain't no grave gonna hold my body down Come in just a minute. Whew, hallelujah. Before Bob comes, let's give an offering to the Lord. Amen? Let's give an offering to God. You know, David said, David said to the Lord, I won't offer that which costs me nothing. Amen? Come on, this thing's going to cost you something. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I remember we were in a tent meeting one time, and we had the joy of the Lord came down. We had a, we had a shout and dance in time. And we was trying to take up an offering, and people was laughing and carrying and crazy. It was a crazy night. And we went ahead and took up that offering anyway. We came into the tent the next morning, and we found money in the garbage cans. <laughs> people were so crazy, they gave hilariously. They just gave crazily. There was money in the garbage cans, money on the floor. They were throwing money all over the place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like they didn't have a care in the world. Hallelujah. I think we're all too dignified in this house tonight. Amen. These folks look pretty dignified, don't they? Huh? <laughs> Come on, let's stand. And let's look a little foolish tonight. I have a shirt. I made this shirt. And it says stultified across the front. Stultified is, yeah, yeah. It's a word that means to act in a very illogical manner and to look clamorously foolish. The Holy Ghost may make you look a little clamorously foolish and act in ways that might seem illogical to the natural mind. Amen? Come on, are you with me? Hallelujah. Why don't you, let's sing this song one more time. There ain't no grave, ain't no grave. And, and let's take up a jumping offering tonight, okay? Here's, here's what you're going to do. Don't walk down here to put your, your you know, I mean, if you, if you want, if you don't want to jump in. But if you really want to get this, there we go. See, Mark, right there? Just take up a jumping offer. Let's jump on down here to the front. And let's just with some joy, let's with some joy give to the Lord. Amen? Come on, do it, do it. Get up out of the 
Mr. Root and Tootin' Bobby Newton. Come on. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Give the Lord a clap, a shout, or something tonight. Shout out to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Amen. It feels like camp meeting around here. I think these belong to you. <laughs> I think those are yours. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time, amen. It feels good in here. I feel victory in the house tonight. Glory. Some of y'all look like you're saved. Hallelujah. Some folks you can't tell they got salvation or indigestion. Hallelujah. Joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I feel like we already had church tonight. Amen. I'm so honored to be uh, Speaking again at conference, and it's a great honor. I just love this fellowship, and it just feels like family. Amen. Just uh, many of you have done so much for our ministry, and, and there's no way we can thank you for believing in us. How many know that's what it's about? Believing in each other. Amen. Amen. Believing in the call that God has on each other's life, and and uh, not not just taking care of yourself, but taking care of your brothers and your sisters. That's what it's about. Amen. Amen. And so we just love you guys and, and uh, honored to have my, my pastor, my father-in-law, uh, Brother Richard White, amen, with us tonight. Amen. Give him a hand clap. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, if you don't like my preaching or you don't like my style of preaching, blame him. It's his fault. Hallelujah. Uh, everything I learned, I learned from him. Hallelujah. And I uh, thank the world of him. And I'm glad to have my son and my beautiful daughter-in-law. Yeah. Amen with us tonight and my wife. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. She's going to come bless you with a song. Amen. She's going to do a song that April wrote and they're going to do it together. So why don't you make Stephanie welcome. The song says, have you heard the latest? Jesus is passing. We don't sing this together too often, so I got to stand over here by her. <laughs>
I got something to say. <laughs> he didn't know I was going to do this. His birthday is in two days. <laughs> so I think we need to sing happy birthday to him. I surprised him come up here tonight with no children. So <laughs> We don't get alone time very often. So this is for his birthday. And we're going to sing happy birthday. All right. We got to do it the Pentecostal way. Oh, happy birthday to you, oh, happy birthday to you. May you find Jesus near every day of the year. Oh, happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May it be the best you've had. May it be the best you've had. All right. <laughs> happy birthday to my wonderful husband. Me. Amen. Have you heard the latest? The Lord is passing by. You know, uh, the greatest news is not that the NFL referee strike is over <laughs> or any, anything else that the world would tell us. The greatest news is what we've been sharing these last two days in this place, that there is a Savior that can heal, a Savior that can deliver. Amen. And here's, I, I love that, you know, April, when I don't, you know, I, I always bug her about her songs. What, what was you feeling when you wrote that or whatever? I, but that one line she put in there, it says, he'll hear, hear your faintest cry. Amen. How many's, how many's had Jesus hear your cry? Amen. Hallelujah. When you cried out in despair. Amen. And he was right there. Amen. And he said, take me to your pain. Take me to where you're hurting, and I'll restore you, rebuild you. Amen. Word of God says, we got a song. We'll have a song the angels cannot sing. It's a song of the redeemed. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Anybody been saved by grace tonight? Hallelujah. Why don't you just thank the Lord in here tonight? Come on, give him about 15 seconds of praise. If he's brought you out, if he's delivered you, glory, glory. Hallelujah. The Bible said when they brought the three Hebrew children, if you read it, after they saw the fourth man, amen, they brought, brought three of them out, but they didn't bring the fourth man out. That tells me he's still in the fire. Amen. That when, hallelujah. He knew that you'd be going through some fires. And he knew you'd go, be going through some pain and some hurt and some disappointments. And he'll say, I'll just stay in the fire and I'll just wait till they have to walk through it. Amen. How many know Jesus is the original fire walker? Hallelujah. He's walking in the fire. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. If you got your Bibles tonight, turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 16. Amen. The theme is the sound. Hallelujah. And uh, everybody's been talking about worship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're going to go that direction tonight. There's an atmosphere of worship. I, I, I feel something different at conference this year, don't you? I feel something. I, I don't know what God. I, I, I told one of the guys we were talking outside, and we're like, we don't know what's, what he's taking us or where he's taking us. But I feel something changing. Something happened in April at conference. I don't know what it was, but there was a shift, amen, among us. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm along for the ride. How about you? Amen. Along for the ride. Glory to God. And I believe this thing's going global. Hallelujah. Our website's uh, apepglobal.org. Hallelujah. Dot com. Amen. I believe that's prophetic. Hallelujah. This thing's going global. Hallelujah. God's going to take the gospel to the world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 16. I'm, I'm in Matthew. Hallelujah. I better get on the... How many's enjoyed April and Brian? Amen. Glory. Glory, glory. 1 Samuel chapter 16. I'm just going to title this The Sound. Is that all right? Pretty original, isn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. The Sound. Now, I have to put a disclaimer for those of you that have never heard me preach before. Uh, I'm a little quiet. I'm a little reserved. Uh, so it encouraged me a little bit, all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. No, I, I'm, I'm what they call old Pentecostal. Hallelujah. I've tried to change, but it, it, it's like a man wearing a different suit. It doesn't work right. So I is who I is. I am who I am. So I might get a little loud, get a little excited. Hallelujah. But just amen me, all right? I guarantee you won't fall asleep the next 30 minutes. Hallelujah. Amen. We're tent preachers. How many's ever been to a tent meeting under an old gospel tent? All right. Hallelujah. We do that in the summertime. We just closed out. Hallelujah. Under the tent. So I feel like we're under a tent tonight. I feel that kind of anointing. Amen. Just swat a few mosquitoes like you're out in a tent. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. 1 Samuel 16, 1. God's talking to the prophet Samuel. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul? See, and I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill thy horn with oil and go. Everybody say go. go. Somebody, say, somebody say there's still enough anointing for my generation. All right. And go, and I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided. One of the translations says, I see me a king. Among his sons. If we jump over to verse 11, we'll find the anointing service. In 11 it says, Samuel said unto Jesse, Are there any children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. Behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down until he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance. And goodly to look to, and the Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. If you would, turn to Revelation chapter 3. 
then I'm going to preach. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Revelations chapter 3. He's speaking to one of the churches, but we're going to snag a little bit of what he said to one of the churches. Hallelujah. Revelations chapter 3, verse 7. And, and to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have sent before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast little strength. How many ever felt a little weary a time or two? Little strength, and thou hast kept my word, and haste not denied my name. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word tonight. God, I thank you for the honor to stand before your people and share your word. God, I thank you for your anointing that is in the house tonight. Use me as your vessel tonight. Give me clarity to follow your spirit. God, we welcome the gifts of the Holy Ghost to operate here tonight. God, hallelujah, where your presence is, there's freedom. And Lord, if there are those that are weary and tired and discouraged, God, speak to their hearts tonight. In the name of Jesus, amen. The sound. The sound. I believe there's a shift taking place. I believe there's a shifting in the atmosphere. You know, God takes us through seasons. As individuals, as an organization, as a people, as a generation, as a church, as a whole. God takes us through seasons. He tells us, he'll say, I'll take you from faith to faith, from glory to glory. How many know we serve a progressive God? We serve a God of progression. You know, in, in the religious world, we celebrate the arrival. You know, I go to a lot, I preach in a lot of conferences and a lot of camp meetings, and they'll have messages like getting to the next level, opening new doors, new anointings, greater ministry, bigger churches. You know, in the, in the church, we celebrate the arrivals. We celebrate when God opens up new doors in our life or better things happen. But I believe God celebrates the walk more than he does the arrival. Amen. Amen. God knows you're going to get where he wants you to go. He said, I have the plans laid out before you. Am I right? Amen. Hallelujah. I have a plan for your life. So God already knows the plan. So the arrival, he doesn't really celebrate. Amen. He celebrates the walk. He celebrates how you get there. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. How many besides me has had some long walks with Jesus? Come on. Listen, in, in, in the world, we tend to value a person in three ways. We value them by what they have. Amen. By what they have, by their cars, their houses, their position, their money. Amen. But the thing is, if we're valuing a person by those things, those things are temporary. They're not going to last. Am I right? Amen. So we can't really value a person by what they have because they can be sitting here a millionaire today and be a, a homeless tomorrow. So if that's the value of a person. It's, it's not a good thing. Amen. We value a person by their accomplishments, by their talents, by what they've done. And I, I meet new people all the time traveling across America. I'll be at a different conference tomorrow night speaking. And I'll meet a lot of new people tomorrow. And when, you, when somebody comes up and, and a stranger, they'll talk to you. And I, one thing I've noticed is they begin to tell me what they've done. They want me to accept them by their accomplishments. Y'all with me tonight? So if we value a person by their accomplishments, how do we measure how good they are, how precious they are? Because what, what, a, a little mama that's raised five kids and uh, living on welfare is, as, and, and raised their kids to be great kids, in my eyes, is just as precious as a, 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 a ruler of a nation. Amen. Amen. So you can't value a person. To me, a pastor of a church of 20 people, a man that loves his people, is just as precious as a person that pastors a church of 2,000. And in my opinion, probably more effective. How can a shepherd know 2,000 sheep? But if you've got a shepherd with a, a close flock, amen, he knows his people, amen? We value ministry by how big our churches are. But I tell you what, God values us in a different way. We value a person by their, 
by their personality, their temperament. They're, they're, they're fun to be around. They're, they're full of this and they're exciting. But God values us. God, when God looks at us, He looks at our heart. Amen? Amen? He looks beyond everything else and He looks inside of us. Is this all right tonight? And the Bible said, we read here that the prophet Samuel is mourning. The favor of God's lifted off of, a, off, off of a generation. And he feels a shift taking place in the atmosphere. And, and Samuel doesn't know what's happening. He's not sure. He's acting like there's been a death. He's mourning like uh, uh, God's uh, people have died. And God comes by and he tells him, he says, rise up, Samuel. Get up. It's not over. He says, I see me a king. I see someone's heart who is right. I see a generation who is ready for my anointing. I see a generation who is ready for my glory. It's not over. And you know what I feel like God is saying? Even when we look at the condition of our churches and the condition of our generation, God is saying, don't give up. Don't get weary. I know it doesn't look good. Amen. But I have found me a generation that's got their heart right. I found me a people. I was watching uh, our our. our Precious couple here do worship this morning. Amen. And, and, and the presence of God just moved over me. And, and God said, look how pure their praise is. Amen. There's a generation whose heart is after God. Who is pure. Listen, I go to churches and some of the worship is more entertainment than worship. And some of the worship is more look at me than look at him. Come on. Amen. That's why I love working with these guys because, in my opinion, they're top-notch musicians. They can walk into any place and, and play, but, but they're, they're, they're after God. Yeah. Come on. They're after His presence. Amen. God, that's what attracts the glory of God to a generation. When people are looking for, when there is a sound that is pure, when there is a sound that doesn't say, look at me, look what I've done, value me because of this or that but it's a sound that says God, amen, I want you in the middle of my life. I need you right in the middle of my ministry. I love you so much God. I know what you brought me out. You brought me out of bondage. You brought me out of oppression. You brought me out of fear. You brought me out of hurt. And God, the least I can do is make a sound to you, a praise to you that you can I wish somebody just jump to your feet and for about 30 seconds release a sound in here tonight. Come on, somebody shout. Hey, has he done something for you? Has he changed your life? Lift your... Woo! Nah. Hallelujah. Heaven says there will be a new song. A new song. Listen, the angels are doing a good job. The, 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 they were created to do what they do. The cherubims and the seraphims, they, they do a great job. Isaiah saw them. Amen. They cried back and forth, holy is the Lord. Amen. They, amen. God is so awesome they can't even look. They cover their face and cover their legs and amen. Their feet and circle the throne room. They're doing a good job. The Bible says, amen, that the elders, amen, bow before him. All creation worships him. Amen. But listen, you got a song. That the rocks cannot relate to. You got a song that even though the angels have been singing, amen, but you got a song. They can't sing a song about being bound by hurt and bound by pain and the blood of Jesus setting you free. They don't know about wanting to commit suicide and have no hope and Jesus coming by. They don't understand that, but you do. You got a song that the angels can. Woo! A sound. A sound. And so there's a shift taking place 
and Samuel. Amen. And Saul. Now listen, don't give Saul so much. You know, I've heard preachers beat old Saul up, but amen. Saul just had some things he needed to talk to Jesus about. If Larry Lowe was around back then, we would have worked Saul out. Come on. Come on. I mean, yeah, he, he messed up, but if you really look into some things, uh, 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 Saul really has some stuff that caused him to fail. We're so quick to, uh, if somebody falls, we're so quick to beat them up and kick them while they're down. If you would just look between the lines and the mistakes, you'd find, mm -hmm. hallelujah. You know, uh, if you'd read there uh, uh, that, that God anoints the same prophet, went to Saul, and anoints him. And in 1 Samuel chapter 10, they go looking for him. And they say, where's the, where's the king? And they say, well, he's hiding among the stuff. He had the call, but he was still hiding in the baggage. Oh, come on now. Come on. Never got real with God. Never got real with the Lord. See, there's a generation of church that never let God deal with the baggage. Oh, come on now. There's a generation that's been leading our spirit-filled churches that never come out. Oh, they could preach and they could sing and they could build churches. But when God went looking for them, they were always hiding in the baggage of yesterday. Is this all right? The baggage of pain and sorrow. Amen. See, that's why there's a new sound coming. Because there's some folk in here that you've come out of your baggage. And you've let Jesus work you out. And you let some stuff happen in you. Amen. Listen, that makes a new sound. You don't have to worry, worry about how to maintain your hurt and maintain your pain and maintain your sorrow because you've come out of the baggage and you've got a voice of freedom and a voice of redemption. You've got a sound. Told you I'm quiet. Not only did Saul stay in the baggage, but amen, he found out not everybody loved him. So he always had that pressure. He had to prove himself to everybody. Amen. Performance anxiety will cause you to mis, uh, mislead a generation. When they tell you you need to be seeker friendly, you'll do everything you can to fill your church because after all, your values and how big your ministry is. That's all right preaching tonight. And so he always felt like that was always there in Saul's heart, I believe. Always there. I got to prove God called me. I got to prove is this all right preaching? Third thing we find in Saul's life was discontentment. Instead of waiting when he was told to, he, the people started to scatter. And when the prophet asked him, what, why did you do it? He said, well, the people were leaving me. It's amazing what people will do in ministry to keep people in their church. They'll disobey God. Mm, insecurity. Why? Because it all, I believe it all goes back to the baggage. Is this all right preaching? That Saul never came out of. So God raised up a generation to lead his people, but they didn't have a voice. They didn't have a sound that was pure. Mm. So God tells Samuel, he says, hey, listen, you still got enough oil there. Seven to nine quarts of oil would it took to anoint a king. He was so upset of how things was, he didn't realize that God still had enough oil. We're talking about how bad things are today. and How things, how, how, you know, how they're rejecting the church. Come on. I hear pastor after pastor saying, I can't get people in like we used to. It seems like they're not interested in God. And we hear this over and over. And if you look at it, it would cause the old man to weep. Mm, isn't that the scripture, Ezra? Hallelujah. The young generation shouted and danced. The old ones weep. If we're not careful, we'll stand there weeping and not even see right before us that there's a generation singing. There's a generation dancing. 
there's a generation rejoicing and that there is still enough oil in God's house. There is still enough anointing to raise up a sound, raise up a sound of healing, a sound of redemption, a sound of salvation. Can you hear it tonight? There's a sound of a new generation. God seen something in David's heart. He heard a sound. David was a worshiper out of the tribe of Judah, out of praise. He, he, see, David's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. I preach out a lot. Well, my favorite one's Jesus, but besides him, David's right up there. Hallelujah. David was a worshiper. Amen. Hallelujah. He had a sound. God seen something in the heart of David. There was a voice that was relevant. There was a voice that even though nobody was hearing it yet, that even though, hallelujah, it was in a field and just the sheep around him. Oh, let me tell you, pastors, you may not think you're making a difference in Montezuma or Newton or Barn City. You may not think you're making a difference around Des Moines. Amen. Hallelujah. You may say, well, it's just this flock, these people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But you have have a voice that is relevant and it may just be a flock right now but there's a nation that's about to hear the daughters prophesy amen a nation that's about to hear the sons prophesy amen you have a voice that is relevant hallelujah he found something in David found something in so much that even in the book of Revelations He's talking to this little church, this weak church, this weary church that stayed faithful. And he said, I'm going to give you a key. Now, he could have picked any house. He could have said, I'm going to give you the key to the house of Moses, the first dwelling place, made of badger skin, a tent. Mm, Moses was a first tent preacher. I love him. That tent's coming to Newton, Iowa next year. Hallelujah. He could have said, the house of Solomon, the one of beauty, the one in 2 Chronicles 5 when they brought the presence of God in the dancers and the singers, the glory filled the house where the priest could not stand the minister. But he said, the house of David. David never built a house. David never got to build a tabernacle. David wanted the glory so bad. David wanted it so bad that when he brought the glory back to his kingdom, he took off his king's garment and put on a priest one. He wanted, he had a passion for the glory. He wanted it so bad. I believe what God is saying. Hallelujah, that he, of all the houses he dwelled in, he valued the house of worship. He valued the house of passion. He valued the house that had a sound that even though it was never built, (laughs) even though it never got stones put together, even though no structure ever came of it, even though man never saw the beauty in it like they did Solomon's, he valued the sound of David's house. He valued the sound of worship. And he said, for you that are weary and you that are weak in this last day generation, amen, I'm going to give you the keys to the house of worship the keys to the house of praise a a key Acts 15 16 says after this I will return and build again the tabernacle of David which has fallen Mm -hmm. hallelujah listen hallelujah They they were told the Hebrew children to bow to a sound a bow to a sound bow to the sound of CNN Bow to the sound of popular demand, moral, uh, 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 culturally correct ideas and values. Uh, amen. Bow to the some of you in here. Amen. The, the powers of this hour has tried to get you to bow to depression, bow to anxiety, bow to fear, bow to the things of this world. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. But the children of God would not bow. Uh, oh, hallelujah. They wouldn't bow. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Listen. Uh, amen. There's some of us, uh, amen, that we have hung in here and we have stuck it out uh, and God's about to bring his glory uh, 
God's about to bring his favor into your home, your ministry, your children. Wow! Oh, God's going to give you a key of access that when you thought it was over, that mighty Russian wind's going to blow in. Amen. That move of God is going to touch your life. Somebody shout, there is a sound. Oh, come on. Somebody say, there is a sound. Why don't you lift your voice for about 10 seconds and let the enemy know God's people still has a voice. There is still a sound. Woo. Hey, man, this sound's going to give you a key. Hey, man, it's going to open the door. Hallelujah. Not, not for you. See, see. The, all right. Okay. Hallelujah. Not a key to get you new houses. Not keys to make you successful. Not keys to get you pink Cadillacs and a lot of money. Amen. But I believe it's a key that's going to open a door for the world to see Jesus. When David worshipped, he said, lift up the sides of the tabernacle. I want them to see me dancing. I want them to see me worshiping. Amen. I believe there is a sound, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. That's going to give us a key. That's going to open up a shut door. Amen. That the prostitute can see Jesus. That the drug addict can see Jesus. That people in third world countries, amen, can see a God of healing, a God of restoration. He said, if I be lifted up, I I will draw all men unto me. Somebody shout, there is a sound. There is a sound coming out of the house of God. Hallelujah. Now, we find, if you would go back and study the, G, the history of David, that David was born of a different mother than his other brothers. Me and Brian, me and Brian are brothers from a different mother. <laughs> Hallelujah, we're twins. Hallelujah. Glory. He was different. He didn't look all like all his other brothers. He was a rare. Some historian, historians, I can't even say the word. I see I try to use big words and I can't do it. Some people that study stuff. Commentaries say that he was a redhead. That is a rare thing in the Jewish culture. So David was very rare. He was very unique. So you may not like everything you've been through. You may not like the divorce you had to walk through. You may not like the abuse that you had to walk through. You may not like that addiction, that pain, that, come on now. Amen. Those memories of yesterday, those seasons of depression. But, amen, what you've been through made you very rare. It made you very precious. Mm -hmm. Come on. It's marked you. You're not like everybody else. You're somebody special. Amen. And I found out that God uses what people reject. God uses what is different. Amen. God uses it. See, there cannot be, see, in all the sounds of the world, the world is full of them. Jay Leno, David Letterman, CNN, Fox News, country music. There's a tear in my beer. Rock and roll music. Kiss. A generation went after, after a band that looked like they rear-ended a zebra. Because they had a sound that was different. They painted themselves. They looked different. Come on. Hallelujah. A generation that was different. Listen. Hallelujah. The reason you've been through what you've been through. It makes you so rare that when you open your mouth, there is going to be a sound that defines the church, a sound that's going to make us so different, amen, that through all the noise of the world, they're going to hear the voice of Jesus. They're going to hear the voice of a Savior, the voice of a healer. Come on now. A sound. Now, I don't know the whole story of David, but I, he might have been rejected by his father. Mine have not been accepted because of where he came from. Psalms 51, the writer said, I was shapen by iniquity, 
and the sin of my mother conceived me. Listen, David was saying, I was born in a messed up deal. (laughs) I was in a dysfunctional family. I had some messed up stuff. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. And when it came to the anointing service, his father decided to hide the rare one. Amen. However, his father said, let's, let's get him and his harp and his flute and all that crazy stuff. Get him out in the field. Come on, get him out. Hallelujah. Amen. They won't fit in our religion. They won't fit in our worship team. Mm-hmm. They got tattoos and earrings. Mm-hmm. Come on now. Hallelujah. They've been alcoholics. Uh, let's put them out. Hallelujah. They, they won't fit into what we're doing. Hallelujah. How I many know religion's been doing that a whole long time? They didn't come walking in in a three-piece suit and their hair slicked back. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We rejected them. But listen, there's a whole generation of rare people that's been wounded. And come on, we got a generation that's come up in homes with no daddies. A generation that's come up in houses that are messed up. But they've got a voice. Amen. They've got a voice. A voice of coming out of abuse. And a voice of coming out of loneliness. A voice of saying, hey, my God, you may not want me but there is one that when he hung on a cross he knew who I was he looked ahead in time and said I will make something out of them they will be mine y'all still with me tonight And so David I believe had to live with rejection hallelujah had to live his life in a messed up situation but you know I'm a storyteller. He had a grandma named Ruth. And I imagine sometimes old Ruth, my grandma always had one of them big hang-me-downs like the grandmas have. She'd always put her arm around me, that hang-me-down would always hit me. (laughs) Hallelujah. I can see old Ruth, Grandma Ruth, putting her arm around David. Amen. Snuggle him in with the old hang-me-down. Hallelujah. Loving on him, kissing on his little freckles. Amen, rubbing his red head, hallelujah, and saying, listen, son, hallelujah, I know what it's like to feel like no one cares. I was a minority in a stranger's land. Amen. I followed Naomi because she had a God that was bigger than the drought and the famine I was in. She said, I lost my loved ones. I lost my family. She said, I, I, all I had was the wheat. Amen. In the corner of a field. Amen. She was saying, I was just a survivor. On. And she said, but hallelujah, no matter what they thought of me and no matter what they said of me, I found the Lord of the harvest. Amen. I found my Savior. I found my Boaz. She said, son, if God can do that for me, he can do it for you. You just keep singing your songs. You keep dancing in your field. You keep playing your music because God, will, the Lord of the harvest, he'll notice you. He'll find you. She said, he found me in the field. He found me in the field. The Lord of the harvest found me. I can see Ruth saying, that's all right. Let your daddy put you in the field. But the Lord of the harvest, he's going to find you. He's going to find you out there. He knows right where you are. I was somebody shouting here like you were living in the corner of the field just surviving but the Lord of the harvest came by your life and he called your name he brought you out he delivered you let your neighbor say he found me come on find your neighbor and say neighbor I was living in the field just surviving I was living there just surviving through my tears, surviving through my pain. Oh, but the Lord of the harvest found me. Amen. Hallelujah. He found me in the field. He found me in my pain. He found me in my sorrow. He found me in my tears. He brought me out. He delivered me. My God brought me out of the field of this world. He set me free. He set me free. He set me free. free. Broke the Chains of bondage. He set me free. Would you be free? Woo, let's see. 
from this world? How many's been delivered? How many's been brought out? Stand your feet. Let's sing that old red hymn back book. He set me free. Hallelujah. Come on. Woo. He set me free. Yes, he set me free. Yes. He broke the bonds the of prison, prison for me. For me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus. You see, and glory to God. He set me Woo. free. He set me free. He set me free. He, he broke, broke the, the bonds, bonds of prison, prison for me. me. See, when you've been really brought out, I'm not talking about religious folk. I'm talking about some folk that knew how messed up they were when Jesus come by. See, when you've really been brought out of the fields, the fields of sorrow, the fields of pain, when you've really been brought out, you've got a song. Oh, hallelujah. Don't just give me a worship leader. Give me a worship leader that's shed a few tears, that's had a few lonely nights. Don't give me a preacher. Give me a preacher who's been through the valley of the shadow of death. Give me somebody that knows what it's like, amen, to go through a hard season. And when you find them people that's been set free, they got a sound that the world... Oh... I've had young preachers say, Brother Bob, how do you preach like you do? How do you have that passion, that passion like you have? I said, I, the only way I can explain it is every time I preach, amen, what's in me comes through what I've been in. Come through all the tears I cried. Come through all the times I've been rejected. Come through all the times I've been betrayed. Amen. Through those times of weariness. Amen. That passion. Amen. I can't help but talk about him. I can't help but show you who he is. If he's done it for me, he can do it for you. If the Lord of the harvest can bring me out, he can bring you out. He is your deliverer. He is your savior. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll try to get wound up a little bit. A rejected generation. A rejected generation that's going to have access to the keys of worship. A sound. A sound that had fallen getting ready to rise back up. The prophet shows up at the house of Jesse. They're fixing to have a convention. They're fixing to have a pep convention. He's got his boys out there trimming the bushes and the lawn, sweeping off the sidewalk. They're cleaning the house. Mama's in pressing all their clothes. The boys are in there, and Daddy said, put a little hair gel in. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Make sure your clothes aren't wrinkled. Glory. They're grabbing their big 75-pound family Bibles, getting ready to carry them into service. Hallelujah. They're all ready for the service, ready for their convention, ready for their camp meeting, ready for their Sunday morning service. And there's a whole generation. And the prophet shows up, and I... I can see Jesse saying, well, surely it's going to be one of these boys. Look at, look at them, man. Woo, they're a prize. They've been a, they, they, they're, they're on TBN. Come on. They got the best-selling album on the charts. They, come on. They, surely it's them. They got the biggest church in Des Moines, Iowa. It's got to be them. But it amazes me the oil's in the house, but it stays. It's not flowing. And I wonder how many of our Sunday morning church services folks walk in the same and leave the same. They come in hurting and broken and bound up and they leave broken, hurting and bound up. Oh, but they're dressed up in religion. 
They got their fake Jesus smile. They're wearing their nice watches. And if you go to Pastor Kenny's church, you wear two or three of them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. They, they're driving their nice cars, but there's no anointing flowing. There's no change. How many's been a few of them church services? I've been to a few of them conferences. <laughs> well, they've taken up three offerings, and everybody had their envelopes. If you sow your $100 seed, you're going to get your $1,000 miracle. I walked out just as broke as I was when I walked in. Just as sick as I was when I walked in. No change. Why? Because there wasn't a heart of passion in the house. Oh, they're handing out their business cards and they're telling you how great their ministry is and how well they've built up and how great their organization is. Y'all get y'all clamming up on me. And the oil stays because there wasn't a heart of passion in the house. I just want to I just want to tell the enemy that you could try to hide me in the field. <laughs> Listen, some of you feel like you've been hiding in the field of depression. Hiding in the field of oppression. Hiding in the field of addiction. A field of tears. A field, field of brokenness and pain and sorrow. But I want you to know something. God's getting ready to bring you out. So God's getting ready to bring you out. And so they're having service, and the prophet says, you know what, this don't feel right. I got the oil. They got a bunch of boys. I'm in the right house. It's the one God told me to go to. But it's just as stiff and dead as it's always been. Nothing is flowing. Nothing's happening. And I could see him saying, all right, is there anybody else? Because it seemed like I know these guys look good. And I know you got your house all cleaned up. And you got nice pews. And you got stained glass windows. And you got your doctrines and your theology. And your traditions. But it just seemed like something. The something is missing, Jesse. What's missing in the house? Do you have any other sons? Because you got all these hearts lined up. But they're, all, they're, they're just like Saul. They got baggage. I know they're dressed up, but I can see baggage somewhere. And if I'm going to put oil on them, they're going to run out to their closet and get in their baggage just like Saul did. And they're going to mess up another. Thank you, Holy Ghost. They're going to mess up another generation and mess up another, uh, 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 mess up the gospel for another generation. Amen. They don't seem right. We don't need another copycat of yesterday. We don't need another copycat of what the church has done the last. Uh, we need. Uh, we need a new voice. We need a new heart. We need a new anointing. Is this making any sense tonight? He says, well, there's little David, the redhead, the rare one. He's out there in the field with his harp. I can hear him out there singing. Look what the Lord has done. I can hear him out there singing. I can hear him out there wailing on that old beat-up guitar. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can hear him out there playing that saxophone. Beating them drums. Uh, he's just out there making that noise. He really, you know, I didn't think he was important enough to come. You know, he'd got, you know, he just, he, he really, you know, he's, out, he's from a different mama. And, you know, this happened and that happened. You know, just, uh, Samuel says, go get him. Go get him. You know what I hear the Spirit of God saying? And that some of you are sitting here tonight wondering how in the world you ended up in this fellowship and wondering how it, you ended up in this conference and wondering how you met Jim or met me or met Larry and wondering how you, you, the God took you to where you are and how you ended up from Minnesota to here. Amen. You're wondering how you ended up in that pew. Let me tell you. Amen. The anointing. Amen. Say, go get them. Go get them. Go get them from Minnesota. Go get them from Illinois. Go get them. Go get them. I know what their past is like. I know what they've been through. Go get them. They got a voice. Go get them. They're going to change a generation. Go get them. They're going to bring the glory back to my house. Go get them. They're going to dance when no one else wills. They're going to vote. Oh, 
Oh, I was somebody in here that knows that God handpicked you and you're sitting here for such a time as this because God's given you a voice that's going to change a generation. God's given you a sound that's going to set the world free. Hallelujah. 20 years ago, I was a cocaine addict. 20 years ago, I was a drug addict. Playing in the nightclubs, wanted to die, commit suicide, didn't want to live. Amen. But God told the Holy Ghost, said, go get him. I'll bring him out of drugs. I'll bring him out of bitterness. Listen, I hated the church. I hated the church because of what it did to my daddy. Watch my dad walk away from ministry because of church splits. Watch my mama get bitter. Still dealing with junk today, 30 years later. And I was a bitter kid. I said, them church folk are a bunch of hypocrites. They got just as much junk in them as the people outside of church does. Amen. Hallelujah. At least the people in the bar is real. You get a few drinks and they'll tell you their problems. They'll work it out with you. Come on. Hallelujah. But God said, go get them. Go get them. Get them and I'll bring them out of drug addiction. Go get them and I'll bring them out of pain. Listen, I was a kid. I had so much pain, 23, 24 years old. I, I, I didn't care what I did to people. My heart was so bitter. Amen. I hated life. I had no hope to live. I didn't even want it. There were times I'd pop pills. And we, in our apartment, a bunch of us guys lived there. We had a box full of pills. I'd just take a handful and just take them. Didn't care what they were. It didn't matter if I woke up the next morning or not. Amen. But God looked on a gravel road in 1992 and said Holy Ghost go get him he has a sound he will set a generation free I don't know how I got here but I know one thing my God called me he anointed me he brought me out gave me a beautiful wife <laughs> Woo. gave me four wonderful kids hallelujah I'm blessed I don't know how I got here, but all I know, I was standing in a field of pain and sorrow. And one day, I heard my father call, Woohoo! Woohoo! Come out of the field. Come and dine. The master calleth, Come and dine. You may feast at the master's table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into. Hallelujah. So he calls for David. David comes running out of the field. He's got sheep dung on his feet. Come on. He's got mud on his garments. Come on. He's been out there. Listen. Hey, man, if you work with sheep long enough, you're going to get some stuff on you. Come on, people in ministry. My pastor, he ought to say amen. Hallelujah. Some of them sheep. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey Amen. You, you deal with people long enough. See, your greatest battles in life will always be people. Your scars that you're sitting with right now didn't come from your houses or your cars. It came from people. Your pain will always come from the sheep around you. And God calls him out of the flock. Calls him away from Sister Bucket Mouth. And Sister Hoot Nanny. And Brother Save a Pew. Calls them out from crazy cousin Louie. Drunk Aunt Lulu. <laughs> Anybody besides me go to family reunion and say, there ain't no way these people can be related to me. <laughs> Calls them out. I better, some of y'all getting bored. I better quit. Calls them out, little David. He comes running, and he comes running, and when he hits the door of the house, when the sound walks in, <laughs> when the worshiper enters the house, when praise crosses the threshold, you know what amazes me about my sister April? Amen. As I've, I've seen what she goes through, 
and night after night, I've seen her get behind that keyboard when just hours before she was so sick she couldn't get out of a bed and watch her hit those keys on that keyboard and watch the glory of God come in. Why? Because when a worshiper walks in a door, when the sound comes in the house, and all of a sudden when the worshiper entered in, if we could fast forward just a few seconds, there's standing a crazy prophet, wild look in his eye, trembling and shaking, and in front of him is a young boy about 15 to 17 years old, red hair, standing there with a look on his face like some of y'all are tonight. Knees having fellowship. How many's ever had a God moment where you're standing and saying, I don't, I don't really know what's going on, but something's happening. And that boy, the oil, the lights, you can see the oil shining from the lights. As it's dripping down his hair, thou anoints my head with oil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My cup runneth over. The oil's running down his head. It's dripping off his lips. It's getting in his ears. He's breathing in the oil as it runs down his garment. It's running over the sheep dung. It's running over the mud. It's running over the dirt. See, right now under this anointing, it's running over your scars. It's running over your pain. It's running over your memories. It's running over your past. It's running over your disappointments. And when God covers you, He covers you. When God anoints you, He anoints you. Oh, you know what He's doing to a generation? He's pouring the oil. He's pouring it on daughters. He's pouring it on sons. He's pouring it on prophets, evangelists. He's pouring it over a pep organization. Right now, He's pouring out the oil. He's pouring out the oil. Come on, shake a little of that oil right now. Shake. Woo. 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 It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that sets the captive free. It's the anointing that declares liberty. It's the anointing that turns the mourning into laughter. Amen. The sorrow into joy. It's the anointing that gives you beauty for ashes. It's the anointing that changes. If you read Isaiah 61, amen, it's all about a generation. It's all about a generation. The oil means the brokenhearted. The oil sets the captive free. And if you you read on. It says they will rebuild. They will restore. Amen. Who? That generation who's been covered with the anointing. That generation that heard a sound that mended their broken heart. A sound that brought them out of captivity. They will deliver. They will deliver. So here comes David out of his daddy's house. He hasn't changed a bit. He's still singing. He's singing. And Saul, who's so messed up, got issues, demons, his songs are making him feel better. He's still singing. Still singing. His daddy never recognized the oil, but he's still singing. He's still got a sound. Now comes the giants that Andrew talked about. I'm about done. The giants is mocking a generation. A giant is defying God's people. Listen, we have been dealing with the giants. And I'm not talking about the big ones like abortion, murder. I'm talking about the giants of oppression. The giants of of discouragement, intimidation. Those giants that has brought down a generation. David, 
goes to the valley, gathers him some stones, and heads towards the giant. See, this is where the sound makes a difference. See, old Goliath is coming out there, and he's saying, hmm, he's talking trash. All the prophets are scared. They're having denominations, they're having meetings and trying to figure out how they're going to revamp the church. Let's try fog machines. Let's try some new stuff. Come on. New stuff is good as long as you don't let go of the old stuff. See, what scares me is when we try to do new stuff and we throw away what God's already done because when you do that, you forget who you are. I get real scared of them people. That's when false doctrines starts happening. Come on. Now, I'm just going to be a spokesman for the old school Pentecost, but it is still relevant today. You better be careful when you want to throw out our heritage. You can have a new sound, but you better hold on to what Grandma had too. What has kept America strong is our schools, from the moment our kids begin to raise up, they teach them our heritage. So when they get 18, they want to fight for America. But yet, this new generation of church wants to throw away our heritage. I want to get some stuff now because this irritates me. And we got all kinds of stuff like the gospel of inclusion coming out. And this junk that there's going to be no rapture. Kingdom now teaching all kinds of junk being pumped in our churches and they're flocking to it by the thousands. How can they be deceived? Because they let go of a sound of an old generation. Ezra, there was two sounds. And as long as there will always be two sounds, the church will be structured and stable. I don't expect this generation to, to dance and shout to Amazing Grace like grandmas did. They're going to sing what they sing. But we better let them know what grandma had. All right, I'm off my soapbox. I'll move on now. <clears throat> so David comes running, and that giant's always been used to somebody coming to fight. But he's coming running. God, I, God showed me this today. He come running as he comes running to that giant. As he comes running... I believe he came running as a worshiper first. And when he come out of that valley, he had a sound that was different. He was doing everything he knew how to do. All he knew, I, I, he said, I, up to this point, I don't know how to be a warrior. I just know how to sing. And I know how to worship. And I know how to give God praise. And he's coming to the battlefield. Meanwhile, amen, all the religious leaders are in the tent hiding. Amen. The generation is scared, intimidated. Amen. We got people, the churches don't know what to do with them, don't know how to heal their issues, don't know how to take care of their life. And all of a sudden, here comes the one with a sound. And he's coming and he's worshiping God. And he's praising God. Amen. And history tells us there must have been something about the sound that was different because Goliath lifted the shield to take a look and the moment he did the moment the devil of anxiety and the devil of depression and the spirit of intimidation and the powers of sorrow and defeat exposes themselves see people will open their hearts to you if you just take the time to listen people will tell you what's, what's hurting them and the moment they do that sound shifts from worship see that worship gives you a door it gives you a door to a broken generation. It gives you a door to a hurting person. It gives you a door to those that are bound. And the moment they open the door, that sound, see, you'll get people telling you stuff and total strangers. I have them walk up to me in restaurants and begin to tell me all about them and I don't even know who they are. Why? Because there must be a sound that causes them to pull their shield back. When they did, he shifted from a worshiper to a warrior. <laughs> Woo. And when he did, a, a whole generation was delivered because of a sound. Stand to your feet in this building tonight. 
I probably preached way longer than I should have. The sound. Lift your hands if you would. Well, why do I do that? Just do it to be different. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. And lift your voice. See, life will always want to keep you in the field. Life will always want to keep you hidden among the baggage. But God is calling you out. He's calling you out. See, this world, Pastor, he would want to keep you in the baggage. Minister, church leader, whatever position God's called you, whatever voice he's given you, the, the powers of the hour will always want to keep you in the field. But it's okay. It's okay to be rare. It's okay to be different. Because every tear you've ever cried defines the sound that will come out of your voice. Every dark night you lived in will define the sound that comes out. You have a voice. You have a sound for this generation. Why don't you just open your voice right now. Open your mouth. Just begin to praise Him in here. Come on. Just begin to praise Him. Come on. Don't worry about a song right now. Don't worry about where we're going. Just open your mouth. Amen. Let that rare voice come out. Let God hear Joan. Let God hear Larry. Let this generation hear Kenny. Come on, your voice is distinctive. It's, it's a sound that's different than the 80 people that's in this room. You have a voice. Come on, come on. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, a sound. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Hallelujah. You may feel like you're forgotten, but just lift your voice. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, it's a voice, it's a voice. Woo! Woo! Come on, somebody praise him. Somebody praise him.